SARS-CoV-2, uh, the best, the closest parallel in disease that I have to what we see is rheumatic fever, where you have a bacteria, bacterial infection, triggering immune responses. How do you make a vaccine for rheumatic fever? We can't because it is too, it, how do you control that immune response? And this is now where we are now moving into the realms of what could it mean going forward? Let's just assume for a moment, and this is now where we have to extrapolate. Let's assume these immune mediated issues are an ongoing longer term problem. What can we do about it? I think, Philip, we need better regulation. We need better understanding of the science, and we need to take the financial incentives out of it. Uh, it's like, it's like uh, what we're sitting with is like giving a child a loaded firearm and he thinks it's a toy and he shut up the whole world. And now we want to ban firearms forever. Uh, it, it, it has its purpose, you know. So, yeah, we've got to look at things and understand. I think the problem is that biologics and the development with biotechnology has moved so quickly that people don't understand the full impact it's going to have on society. And it hasn't, and thus hasn't been appropriately regulated. Uh, I was going to join a research institute in the US in 1992 before I decided to do medicine. And one of the projects at that university was uh, genetic warfare and how viruses could be engineered as a very discriminate bioweapon. So this has been going on since 92. Uh, this is nothing new. But I was already terrified at the possibility in 92. So the regulation around it is too limited. Uh, there needs to be far stricter. The regulation, Philip, around biotechnology. Biotechnology has the potential to harm more discriminately but more vastly than even nuclear technology has. And so we need the right kind of legislation around these technologies. I think that one of the um, provisors in this, and um, I think that uh, I, I, when I spoke with Susan Langua, she was a retired um, vaccine regulator in the industry. She said something that has stood out to me. She says, everyone is responsible, or yes, everyone is responsible, no one is accountable, because this is how the system has been set up at the moment. My big concern is that because it's going to be so difficult for accountability, what happens if there are longer term health issues for a percentage of the population? And I have to clarify to people all the time that even if there are specific issues, it doesn't happen to everybody. It's always a small percentage. But when you are talking about billions of doses, that small percentage adds up to a lot of people. And we could be seeing the links currently to excess mortality, which is elevated um, across certainly um, the first world countries that have been highly vaccinated. Nobody has yet clearly put a link to say that it's related to this. But at the moment, that does seem to be a plausible um, target for us to look at. The question that people who are listening, because many people have done what they should do according to public health, they've gotten vaccinated, they are now thinking, what does that mean moving forward? What do you say to them? Philip, I think that there are problems. Uh, there, this could have been easily avoided. Uh, a majority of people that took this vaccine did it with good intention and did it uh, for the right reasons. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they weren't aware, made aware of the risk that came with taking this vaccine, even though the manufacturers were clearly aware of the risk from the start. And I think that was part of the uh, information that you required to make an informed decision. Uh, the mandates as well played into that and forced people into making poor choices. But uh, we've got to bear in mind that the vaccines were taken with good intent. And so I think it's vitally important to not divide along those lines, because that was the intention, to divide along vaccine lines. It was a policy that seemed to have a discriminatory agenda to it. So with those that have taken the vaccine, it's vitally important that they watch their health very closely. 
they need to know that there are a few of us around the world that have moved on from treating COVID and are acknowledging these vaccine side effects and injuries and finding ways to treat them, negate them. And so there is always hope and faith uh, with what has transpired. I would have liked to see the entire scientific community with us trying to figure this problem out. Uh, just to put context, we've had an increase in all-cause mortality in some countries up to 40%. That is a drastic increase. We saw a 10% increase during the world wars. And so this is uh, the devastations akin to a war.